Hey everybody, welcome back to another Stoneface Reactions. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we're here for another Made in Abyss episode. We're getting far along, but let's go ahead and take a look at some comments first. Yeah, let us do that. Let's see what we got here today. At the top, we have Jason Brennan. Uh, he has a preamble. I appreciate uh anybody that does <laughs> something that starts with a preamble. <laughs> First thing they want to say is, it's not 100% foolproof, but names ending in co are generally female, which is uh, potentially helpful for remembering which one is Veko. The tribal child they took in, Irumuyi, is also a girl, and we know this because she was banished due to being infertile. Uh, Jess's Pushka name means Flower of the Dawn in the story, while in the actual being derived from a Bulgarian word meaning forgiveness. I wouldn't be survived, uh, surprised if the Mangaka had a different kind of ganja in mind, at least when uh, Wuzukian is concerned. Well, it's kind of like um, <clears throat> the name that I chose, Ractus. Mm -hmm. I literally just made up. Turns out to be an actual word that means key. So. It sounded cool. <laughs> Whoops, someone else thought it did too. Well, no, no, it means an actual word. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what language I... Now I can think it's Bulgarian, because it's... <laughs> <there>. <laughs> but in another language, Ractus, the actual spelling means the word key. So, you know, like... Clickbait. Is unlocking. Data Bulgarian? <laughs> no, I did Data Bulgarian Girl once. That's about as far as I can go down that rabbit hole. There you go. Next factoid. I'll spare any actual spoilers, but we'll note that we're not even close to done with flashbacks this season. So try to keep that things in mind. Wazoo has done uh, when going forward. Oh boy, flashbacks, my favorite. Also, to the uh, the first point in the preamble, since I didn't interrupt you there, I actually just don't remember uh, <laughs> why Irumu Ye. Bleh. That was totally off. Why they got banished, I don't remember that scene. They... Oh, yeah, yeah, that... I don't... I didn't remember that happening, either. I think that was in episode one, when they first reached the island, and then they're talking, and they just have that little... She was like a tiny thing. But Yeah, it must have just been very fast. Well, also, we were... I think probably we were talking about the language. Mm -hmm. It was happening because, as we've already gotten the language described to us last episode, uh, I think back then we just had no idea what was going on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, now on to things that they actually want to say after the preamble. Uh, Fafuda is very cute, but I still prefer Nanachi, but I'm considering a plush version. Alright everyone, down in the comments, name your team. Team Fafuda or Team Nanachi? Nanachi has more animal qualities to her. Them. Still don't know. Um, I, I think I still prefer Nanachi just for, like, the depressive sassiness, honestly. Well, I mean, Nanachi is larger, right? Mm -hmm. Papuda is like a skinny thing, like a, like a ragdoll, whereas Nanachi is like, um, like my neighbor Totoro, right? It's a big mm -hmm. poofy thing. Versus, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I was about to mention Anachi's probably like a real rabbit. There's like probably barely any body, but 90% floof. Uh, next thing they want to say is, honestly, it's pretty straightforward. Majikaja is the town's busy buddy and is constantly poking at everyone's business. Even so, I like him. Yeah, no, that checks out. He's he's at least a fun character to hang around. And hey, uh, He's he's the busybody. Every town needs one. Right? I don't want to. I don't want to be pedantic, even though I am all the time. I just appreciate it when you misread a word and it changes the definition, but doesn't change the meaning of the sentence. You called him the town's busybody, and it's like doesn't change what's being said. It's just mm -hmm. funny to hear. Yelp. He's everyone's busybody. A busybody. You just gotta go with it. Uh, next comment here is from Denitorbi. Uh, Denitorbori. There we go. I gotta give it at least a second shot. <clears throat> I don't know when this is supposed to be found out, but as far as I know, the curse only affects humans, so animals can leave the lair if they want. Really? 
Though it is interesting how those bugs could come up from the sixth layer if the only way to go up and down was the sphere thing. I guess it doesn't matter right now, but at least they're set up as a threat. I love when the author sets up things uh, and uses them later, uh, instead of just shoehorning things in later. Yeah, I messed that up. Uh, both were on draw. Uh, both were on drawings in Liza's letters at the very beginning. She also had a drawing about a giant lizard that apparently never stops growing. We haven't seen that yet. After Reg talked to Fabuda and then saw the blossoms and nameplates, the music choice was a bit weird in my opinion. They played Hanazeve Kardahina, which played before when something important happened. But here, Reg was just walking around and talking to himself. Anyway, I like that song, so I guess I can make any scene exciting. Ah, I gotta catch my breath here. So you did mention the scorpions, right? <laughs> the scorpions? Yeah, sorry, I lost you somewhere. I don't think you said anything about the scorpions in the movie. Oh, I must and have missed that. Things. <laughs> That's what I said. Uh, I lost you. I was like, "Where is he? Where is he really?" Oh yeah, I missed. I missed a single thing. They like the scorpions. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That they had the big fight around. I remember that. Now. I don't remember the seahorse things, so I'm lost on that one. Fair enough. Uh, the other noteworthy song is when they showed Mitty. It was the same when Reg killed her, Pathway. Maybe it was remixed, but the melody was the same. Overall, I'm not a big fan of the season's music, but Kevin Penkin, the composer, already made awesome soundtracks for season one and the movie, so I'm glad he used those songs later, too. I, I guess, really, it just gets set as the Mitty theme then, right? It becomes more of a leap motif indicating a character or a thing. That would make the most sense, right? I'm going to say something that's not going to earn me any more fans. <laughs> the way that I watch the show, with you here and the reaction content, I don't pick up on a lot of the music. I mostly get the, the voices of the characters, because um, I'm not listening to it through the headset. I'm actually listening to it through the television beside me. So I'm getting a muffled version of things, which means... Like, the background, the music is obviously background to the voices of the characters. So I get the voices mostly. And then, when I'm, like, doing editing later, when everything's coming through the television, that's when I'll hear the music and such. But, it tends to be the case that I'm picking up on the emotional elements of stuff when I'm doing the editing, and not so much the music. So I'm not really able to pick up on these things. Right. I mean, I guess you could always go listen to the soundtrack later, at least. Uh, I don't know. I got uh, recommendations. <laughs> but it would lose that impact, right? I've gotten recommendations here that it's not as good as season one. So Fair I don't enough. know why I would do that. All right. Well, uh, and the last thing they want to say, they want to clear something up. The little girl the Ganja guys meet on the Abyss Island is not one of the sages. The original three sages were... Uh, Wazukian, the guy with the night helmet and the lines on his face, Beloff, the guy with the big hair and the weird eyes, and Vuko, the main character of the Ganja group, the woman with red and white hair. Right, so, um... Starts with an I, what's her name? Literally just talked about it. <laughs> hey, Yuru, Yuru, Yurumi, Yurumi? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Maybe. <laughs> you could just scroll up, Griff. You could help me out here. Scroll up. First first line of text in the preamble. Uh, let's take a look. Give me a pronunciation guide, Griff. Uh, actually... Oh yeah, there it goes. Irum Yui. Irum Yui. You were pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So, that's all the comments for right now, then. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the episode. So, last time. So, Theta, do you want the uh, Lord of the Rings edition extended cut, or do you want the... Or do you want something quick and snappy? What's your choice today? I want to sit here and try to be guessing when the ending's coming. <clears throat> let's do it. Lord of the Rings extended edition. Last time on Concealment. Reg attempts to make his way back to the village, but gets lost and is attacked by monsters. He's saved by Fabuda's robotic companion, who explains it is a robot, called an interference unit, designed to collect data on the abyss. 
Reg notes that he and the interference units have similarities, but the interference unit admits it has no data on his model. And then gets Ides Reg back to the village, which he says is called Iruburu. At the village, Rico has a brief conversation with Wazukian, who finds uh, out is one of the three sages, the founder of Iruburu. She then decides to search a cave on the outskirts of the village that the Hollows are too scared to enter, hoping to find Reg and Inachi inside. However, she instead comes across Veko, who reveals that she was imprisoned for trying to prevent the founding of Iruburu due to its dark origins. Seeing that Vuku can help her, Riku removes Vuku's bonds and has her guide her to Nanachi's location. Veiko uh, leads Riko to Beloff's home, and Riko is shocked to discover that Nanachi traded their own freedom to Beloff to stop him from using Midi as a food source. Beloff explains that in the past, Bone Druid visited Iribiru and brought Midi with him. Beloff was so enamored with Midi that he sacrificed a significant part of his body to create a perfect copy of her. Rico then asks Beloff how much it would cost to buy both Nanachi and Midi's freedom, and Beloff's reply is that Rico would either have to give up both of her eyes, both of her legs, or half of her internal organs. Last time on Made in Abyss. Right, now we were guessing what um, Riku would uh, would choose. I think it's pretty obvious, half of your eternal organs, because uh, Beloff said that they would do it in such a way where it wouldn't affect her, like she wouldn't die or anything. All right. My guess. So what's Riku's uh, pink friend called again? Their pink friend? Are you being suggestive, Griff? No, no, I'm talking about, like, the pink childlike creature. The pink child? I appreciate that your descriptions are becoming even less and <laughs> less related to the character you're trying to describe. Uh, are no they not way, pink? There's no way... <laughs> I don't actually think they're pink either, but there's no way that Prushka's former... Uh, anxiety companion, whatever be no, called. No, not the pets. Not oh. the pets. Okay, I thought that's literally what you were talking about. No, I'm talking about the one who almost squeezed them to, uh, what is it, mirror you to bits? Ma? Early on? Ma, Ma, yes. My guess is, because this is, of course, horror and tragedy, is that Ma will instead sacrifice themselves to free Nanachi and uh, Midi. And uh, Rico will not have to sacrifice any organs. I don't, is, is Ma there? I don't think Ma's there. Ma was around last time, and I think they were just too sick and got needed like some rest. Well, they got, but I have they the feeling that they with, will appear again. They That's walked my with guess. Rico through the underground area, mm -hmm. and apparently Rico didn't understand that Ma was like being physically harmed for being down there. Right, but. Uh, when they were walking up to Bellop's place, I don't remember Ma being there. Ma, Ma had to take a bathroom break, I guess. Right, Ma so will return. I don't think Rico is going to sacrifice a person who's not even there. Uh, I don't think Rico is going to choose to. I think Ma will inject themselves into the situation and do so of their own volition in the sake of friendship, because they also value their friends more than anything else now. But Having not, learned that from the group. They're not there, though. That's what I'm saying. I We got a whole episode for them to get there. We're gonna have the Ma bathroom break, like the Rico bathroom break. Also, you're, like, you're injecting motivation and intent to a character who can't even mm -hmm. say anything but their own name. Also, That's right. Also, I'm going with what I think would be the most dramatically tragic. Also... None of the characters act that way in the show so far. <laughs> like, I can't even imagine Reg running in to sacrifice himself. Nanachi literally did that. <laughs> no, Nanachi sacrificed... Nanachi's a different case. It's literally the Nanachi-Midi <laughs> relationship is far more different than the interpersonal relationships that we currently have going on. Mm -hmm. Especially no. considering that the Nanachi midi relationship is, I don't know how old it is, but it's backstory old. 
So, that's what I suppose will happen. How do you suppose they'll resolve this, then? You understand that you responded to my how they'll resolve it with your resolving thing. <laughs> You're at Sorry, we've, we've been here so long, I've forgotten everything of the outside world. It's been less than five minutes, Griff. <laughs> I only have a three-second memory. I told you what I thought was going to happen, <laughs> then you told me what you thought was going to happen, and then asked me what I thought was going to happen. And we could just go back and forth forever. So then, we at least have our guesses about what's going on. Do we have any other comments we want to cover first before we get going? Oh, uh, that uh, Veku is uh, out there and up to no good. Or ostensibly is up to no good. We'll see what's happening. Oh, right. The luring is going to ha be happening. They mentioned last time. It's this event they mentioned nothing about, and now it's going to happen. Uh, sometimes, Grip, I have no fucking idea what you're up to. <laughs> oh, Veku is out there and up to no good. Well, ostensibly, they're up to no good. What did I just say? What was my half of the comment about? Your half of the comment was about getting me to remember to be what you said. Was Vacu just there not out there? Was that your? No, no. Vacu was uh, truly I think to inside connect, of us all. To all connect along. my two brain cells, which are firing right now, Vecca was interested in seeing the luring and has almost certainly wandered off to go observe it, and thus will begin the uh, no good. Sound about right? <laughs> yeah, it seems like a good recap. All I right, don't remember, then. was the luring mentioned in your uh, novel that you just read? Uh, no, the recap did not mention the luring. It was in a single scene, they're walking around and go, Oh, the luring is happening soon. But I no, guess they, I'll watch that. I think they talked about it <laughs> twice during last episode. Like halfway through that uh, Reg, I think, while he was out and about, mm -hmm. saw a bunch of people moving, and then we saw Veku like, glance down, and all these people were walk walking wrong. So, yeah, I thought it might have been mentioned. Yep. So we know nothing except that it's happening. Let's go, let's go see it. Let's go get up to no good. Midi! Oh, Ma is there! <laughs> they were here the whole time, they <laughs> Hey, can't blame me for your bad memory. <laughs> I yes, become a backpack for the rest of the series. Oh, right, that's right. Magica has been uh, there the entire time. I thought this was going to be the moment of you have to learn to negotiate. Magica would just be like, no, that's a bad deal. Here, let me get you a sail. I'll find you a new Nanachi. Of the cat there, just with its mouth open. It's this, it's this dramatic, serious, little bit of tragic moment, and then it's just cat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she was about to go with the internal organs thing. I, I think so. Given the, oh, you can make it hurt as little as possible. Uh, she already went through the attempt to remove an arm thing, so I don't think she's gonna do that again. <laughs> Yeah, so I have to imagine that the thing now is they're going to go out and they're going to find something of value that they can exchange. Right. Majikaja there is probably going to be like, yeah, hey, if you make a deal here at all, you actually do not get to leave. Too bad. So, uh, don't? I mean, if that was true, then Nachi already made a deal. Right, there, there's something extra going on here. Well, I mean, that no matter what, the implication of that would then turn out to be that we were losing Nanachi by the end of the season. Oh, you think they're just gonna 
switch out Nanachi for a red and white version of Nanachi. <laughs> Here, the, the, the rabbits are fungible. It's exactly the same as the other one, right? Again, down below in the comments, are you Team Fapuda or Team Nanachi? Which one is the fluffier? That looks like another machine. Oh, Feka is still here. Feka's just like, Veloff's always been an asshole. <laughs> Oh, they're translating now. Yeah, there we go. We get real words. Oh, assassination attempts. Wait, where's that water coming from? I thought that was a house. Beloff was the one with the, uh, the knight's helmet, right? Yes. I think. No, wait, no. Beloff is the one that's in there. What are you talking about, Griff? Wazukion is the knight with the helmet. So Beloff is just a nobody? Beloff is the guy with the big hair and weird eyes. The main guy. The main prophet or whatever. Ah, so they bring things inside. Why did we split the party? <laughs> yeah, didn't learn a damn thing from the movie, did they? I love how even Majikaja's puppet is panting. <laughs> Ah, the goop shelf, of course. Didn't translate that one. Well, that's a proper noun. It's an instrument made from a crystallized person. You know, proper nouns have meanings, too. Your name has a meaning, Griff. Take it and run. Yeah, now, now seems to be the time to run. You're inside of him right now. Now I said I had a little bit too much. That is much. maybe not what we needed to have translated. Like I said, they always just add a little too much. I thought one, and then the whole house got eaten. I thought One Punch Man was about to jump out. That, Wait, no, he... That weird he's a kaiju. <laughs> Oh, 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 gosh. Oh well, yeah, was that the thing we saw in the flashback when they first arrived? 
you know, possibly. Uh, but we just saw this thing eat someone who turned kaiju. So I don't know who else could fight it. They got another one! Yeah, I don't remember that name before. They're they're brand new, I guess. Well, there's only three sages. We have all three names. I don't remember this one. Yeah, they're they're brand new. Man, I did not expect I was getting a giant monster battle today. I am not disappointed. This is good. <laughs> いい感じ。あの技もあまり通じていない。古い力が出せるはずなのに。古い力。狭い混んでる。ここで使えない。他の産権は来ないんですか。幕が破られないと出てこない。じゃあ、あの人は。ジュロイモンは激しい営みが
It's dangerous. Oh no, it dissolves stuff. You can't dissolve a gas with a solid you, you or a plasma. You can dissolve it into like a liquid. What did I just say, Griff? You can't correct me before the end of statement. Imagine not understanding the concept of mirrors. I mean, the mirror test is a pretty classic, can this animal, uh... Is this animal self-aware kind of test? And the answer is, that one is not. Oh, wait a second, Rico, you put this together very quickly. There's got to have been like a good hour of time just preparing all of this, right? Yes, I don't understand why it split apart at the end. Uh, I think because they cracked it open. They were hitting it from the sides, and it, then it split open from the middle, like a blue banana. And then it reveals the second phase! Sephiroth steps out. You already forgot <laughs> Rico, you're as bad as we are. あの生き物、仮に大ガス見って呼びますけど、出来場もないのに浮いてるのって体のほとんどが空気より軽いのかなって。うん。大きくて空気より軽いなら風で捕まえられるかもって、それで大きな風をずっと起こすのは難しいけ
Gosh, you're right, actually, he's extra silvery today. <laughs> Look, you remember his other hand is on Rico's back, so you can tell what the color change is. Rico! This is already out of the way. What? What? Oh, Okay, the whistle oh. The whistle's like a power up. ジョーもう死んでるよ。やるじゃん。残りの嘘はみんなに任せて大丈夫だよ。ここじゃ新しい女王を作れるほど大きくなれないもん。ジョー。フゾシェ。あれは一つの生物ではなく、あれ一つで
We're dealing with the whole village. But, uh, so, Fapuda is apparently highly essential to everything happening here. Uh, well, at least we know everything going on in the village now. Now let's figure out what's going on with her. Yeah, I'm super confused now, because I assumed Fapuda was your human. Your room, Yui. Mm hmm Uh, apparently not. I still think they are, in fact. I think those are the same person, but two different names for some reason. Hmm, I know, I'm just looking back at some of her comment notes and kind of wondering... Yeah, maybe. They gotta explain it some more, don't they? Well, because they have the same general feel to them, those two characters. Even their hair colors. Mm hmm So, I guess the real question is, did you expect giant kaiju fights today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> you remember last episode when Reiko was running away from the giant kaiju? Right, right, but I didn't expect- but that wasn't a kaiju on kaiju fight, that was Reg just getting stomped. And we've seen that one before, previous to when Reg was running away from it. <laughs> Plus, the city that they're living in is the corpse of a larger thing. So, we've been getting, you know, hit by the fact that there's large shit around here all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But actually seeing the large stuff fight the large stuff is definitely very entertaining. Uh, one of first... those wasn't a kaiju anyway. Mm -hmm. Two of those weren't a kaiju. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We we got Prushka back. Like, ver very literally. Was not actually expecting that. <laughs> she, she gets to hang out as a ghost now with everybody. So, you know, that's something. I mean, technically she was always a ghost. But now she's a visible ghost to everybody. No, she's not visible to or, everybody. She's only visible or, to Rico. Yeah, or and or is just the embodiment of how Rico is sensing or feeling this. Which would probably make more sense, because... The uh, same way his... that Rico sensed Midi, and then mm -hmm. sensed Prushka later, it's the same thing. Rico just has this weird connection to spirits. You know what I'm thinking right now, though? That everyone's Somehow... dead and this is a ghost world? <laughs> That's... I I'm just getting more thoughts here with, like, Mystery Flesh Pit National Park. Like, have you heard or seen that? Is that the weird animated thing where, like, the family goes into a cave? No, completely unanimated. It is specifically a website of a national park about a giant flesh pit and the things that happen to it, uh, which is mostly tourism. Oh. Uh, no, I'm, I'm familiar with that kind of stuff. I used to read a blog from a guy who got stuck on an island where he was doing, like, uh, genetic experiments for the U.S. He's uh, U.S. I can't remember. It was a company or something. And they get stuck there. And everyone turns into zombies. And it's like him sending out, like, once a month uh, messages about what's going on on the island. And then, right, right. And then, well, his last message is from New York. Because he escapes the island. And he's gone into, like, a, a born identity hiding. And no, no messages <laughs> after that. Right, right. Ah, uh, just bore going born. That's that's just a verb now, isn't it? I mean, it very much reads like a like one of those um, zombie novels where like everything is in journal format. Mm -hmm. All right, I had to cut off the last journal because I didn't think I was going to survive. Here's everything that happened to me yesterday. That sort of thing. Except mm -hmm. this is internet blog. Right, right. Uh, let's see. What about the episode? Uh, so, uh, Vueco didn't get into very much trouble. Yet. They're still but... hiding their identity, and then when they said what their identity was, nobody seemed to care. Uh, well, I guess the two there, which includes, uh, Mugi and Majikaja, are just kind of like, Alright, now I'm into this. Let's see what's up. I feel like all you have to do for these people's names is the first word, uh, first letter, and the mm -hmm. last letter. And you just make it up in the middle. And no, uh, no, no one will call you. I out think on it, it right? was like, well, for one thing, one of them's name was Mookie. Not Mooji, mm -hmm. it's Mookie. 
With a G-I-E at the end. That's what I was trying to say. Anyway, continue. Yeah, no, it's what you're trying to say. <laughs> but my point was that you just make up the middle, and we all still understand what you're saying. Right, right. Like the name, like, Bajikaji, right? Whatever. So we, we are forming, like, a slightly wider local community group, which is fun. But they don't care, was my point. Uh uh, I think they're maybe just interested in the story. I guess next time we'll get, like, the consequences of, oh, right, you're the evil one that we put down the pit. Well, I guess down you go again. I think if you're the ultimate evil that got sealed away for God knows how long with mm -hmm. literal tentacles holding you in place and in a position where it makes anyone who goes there physically ill to be, mm -hmm. there's probably some sort of reaction that should be had. I'm just imagining, like, Diablo 1 now, right? Like, you go all the way down to hell, and then, of course, you find, like, uh, Diablo down the bottom, and they're just like, Hey, can I go home? <laughs> and then just wander around the village later. Well, I mean, Diablo has a humanoid form that he can disguise himself as, doesn't he? Uh... I don't know. All I know is that whoever takes the crystal and jams it into their forehead becomes them. I mean, in the same way that, like, Tyrael can just look like some dude, right? Mm-hmm. The same way. Well, yeah, they, they probably have that same ability. They could probably choose to do so. I'm not very up on the Diablo lore, unfortunately. I never played it to completion. Wasn't that interested. Uh, I, I played through one, like, excessively, like, two decades ago. <laughs> I wasn't playing many computer games back then, and then I played uh, two, and didn't play that far, so it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's see, so what about else about this episode? Is there anything that you want to talk about this episode? Searching, searching deep, searching that soul. No, this is just an action episode, which, um, has cool as that might be in a bunch of other anime, mm -hmm. not really what I'm here for with Made in Abyss. Well, I mean, we got, like, lots of, uh, tragedy, horror, people getting injured and killed. And, of course, then everyone, uh, being very anime. I guess, th yeah, no, I, that's what I would call this. This is the most anime episode of Made in Abyss. Outside the movie. Which is literally <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, and I had a lot of negative things to say about the movie, so... Mm -hmm. I mean, I still enjoyed it, I still had fun today, uh, and if we don't have any more closing comments, uh, I guess that's just gonna go ahead and be it here for today, then. Uh, this has been another episode of Stone Face Reactions, everybody. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we'll catch you next time. See everyone. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another Stone Face Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy? <laughs> <laughs>